Good morning. Well, it's night morning here in Southwest Michigan. It is afternoon. It is 1.12 in the afternoon. It is June the 25th, 2024. And I'm sitting in my study in the Herman Hut or the cell, the monk cell. And um, yeah, my wife just took our granddaughters to a someplace they're going to play on the playground at Black River School and then she's going to go to Meyer, Myers. And I thought I got to make a video now because it's been four days and it's going to get kind of hectic around here because our children are coming. <laughs> my son, my second son, our oldest son, as you know, lives down the street and he's married and has two little girls. And then our middle child, Josiah, he's married to Hannah. And they live in Linden, Washington. And they're coming to visit us for a week with Marika and Lydia. And then our daughter, Bethany, our third child and last, is going to be with us tomorrow with her husband, Andy, and her four children, Louisa. Margaret, Jack, and little Nora Jean. So I won't really be making, maybe have time to make a videos. So I thought I'd break the silence and do a video now here in my study. As far as you know that my videos is part of my, my online diary, Crooked Fingers and Life Journal. This is a visual aspect of my life as a bookworm, Christian, uh, diary writer. And I'm on page 539 for the year 2024 in my paper diary. This is how I write it. You know, I, you know, I have folders every month. I have a calendar. It says here, the 27th, Josiah and Hannah come. And Andy and Beth, well, Andy and Beth will be here tomorrow. And they'll be leaving this coming Sunday. And then Josiah and Hannah and their two girls will be here until here's July. And they'll be leaving on the 5th. And then on the 9th of July, I have a session with my psychologist for my mental health. <laughs> well, you know, last time, I think I told you last time I met with my psychologist, we talked about music. He's into going to music festivals, him and his wife. And so we talked about music. And then I realized in talking to him, there's a generational gap because I'm in my 70s. I think he's in his early 60s and he's a different kind of music the music I've been listening to I just got the new Usuret CD uh, cutting the throat of God it sounds kind of blasphemous but it's not really it's just it's and I, I like the elder omens CD and this is the new stomach the healer and then Russian Circles, Guidance. And this is a Icelandic band. I can't, I can't, but anyway, this is Icelandic kind of rock metal. So I listen to all kind of music. Like I said, most of them I listen to music inside the, my car when I'm driving around. Uh, and I do listen to stuff off Bandcamp and stuff like that. But what I thought I'd do in this video in the time remaining is to tell you what I've been reading. I'm still reading uh, Predestination, Early Modern Reformed Theology by Richard A. Muller. Uh, yeah, I'm reading the one on, it's called Inclusive Supalapsarianism, The Heritage of Francis Julius and Lydian, the Leiden Theology and Early Modern Reform Thought. So I've been reading that. And then I'm still reading 
from heaven he came and sought her, defended of atonement, historical, biblical, theological, and pastoral perspectives, edited by David Gibson and Jonathan Gibson. This one came out in 2013, and this one just came out. They're doing one on the five, the, the doctrines of grace. And this is the one on totally depravity. Ruin sinners to reclaim sin and depravity and pa historical, pastoral, theological, and pa theological and pastoral perspectives edited by Jonathan Gibson and, D and David Gibson. So I've been reading these. I read one in the morning, and then the, if I read one on Tuesday, and then I'll read another one on Wednesday. That's how I do it. And still reading the Reformation commentary on Isaiah. I'm on Isaiah chapter 8. The sign of his, Isaiah's son. So I'm reading those. And then, you know, in the morning, my wife and I, in our devotions, we're going through the New Testament. This morning, we read from 1 Corinthians. And we read... Oh, I think we read chapter 4 of 1 Corinthians and chapter 5 of 1 Corinthians. And, um, yeah, it says there in 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 9, I wrote to you in my epistle not to keep company with sexually immoral people. Yet I certainly did not mean with the sexually immoral people of this world or with the covetous or extortioners or idolaters, since then you would need to go out of the world. But now I have written to you not to keep company with anyone named a brother who is sexually immoral or covetous or an idolater or a reviler or a drunkard or an extortioner, not even to eat with such a person. For what I have to do with, for what I, for what have I to do with judging those who are outside? Do you not judge those who are inside? But those who are outside, God judges. Therefore, put away from you, from yourselves, the evil person. And then he goes down to chapter six. Dare any of you having a matter against another go to law before the unrighteous, and not before the saints? Do you not know that the saints will judge the world? And if the world will be judged by you, are you unworthy to judge the smallest matter? Do you not know that we shall judge angels? How much more things that pertain to this life? If then you have judgment concerning things pertaining to this life, do you appoint those who are least esteemed by the church to judge? I say this to your shame. It is so that there is not a wise man among you, not even the one who will be able to judge between the brethren. But brethren goes to law against brother, and that before the unbelievers. Now therefore it is already an utter failure for you that you go to law against one another. Why do you not rather accept wrong? Why do you not rather let yourselves be cheated? No. You yourselves do wrong and cheat, and you do these things that your brother, to your brother. Do you not know that the un unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Not to be deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor homosexuals, nor sodomites, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkard, nor revilers, nor extortioners will enter the kingdom of God. And such were some of you, but you were washed, and you were sanctified, but you were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. So that's what we're reading, my wife and I, in First Corinthians about Christian ethics and holiness. And then we read the Valley of Vision after we ha read the Bible, and then we pray. As far as what I've been reading... I've been reading uh, J.I.M. Stewart. I got this at a thrift store. I got four novels by this writer I, I never heard of. 
that he was a British writer. His name was J.I.M. Stewart. This is the Gotti. I've been reading this pretty steadily. I've read 123 pages of this. And I'm still reading The City Poet, The Life and Times of Frank O'Hare by Brad Gooch. And I'm still reading The Songs We Know Best, John Ashbery, who was uh, at the same time and friends with John o Frank O'Hare. This is John Ashbery's Early Life by Karen Rothman. So I've been reading this. And as you know, I was reading uh, the letters of the poet James Murrow. This is A Whole World, The Letters of James Murrow, edited by Landon Hammer and Stephen Teaser. And I told you I was going to get in the mail that Langdon Ham Hammer, who helped edit these letters, wrote a biography on James Murrow life and art and I just started getting into this so I've been reading that and getting into that and then uh, last year I was reading The Glassberry Romance by John Kuiper Powles and I just picked it up by the night and I've been starting where I stopped I've read over 400 pages of this and continue to read it. I have uh, other novels by him in my library. Two I can't find and one I just found recently at a thrift store. And then I've been reading to the Finland Station, A Study in Writing and Acting of History by Edmund Wilson. I read these in the afternoons. And then I've been reading uh, Rebecca Solit her travel memoir, A Field Guide to Getting Lost. So these are the things I've been reading when I'm not... See, you know, I read my Christian books up until noon, and then I have lunch, and then I, I read things like this. I've been reading this this afternoon, and I've been reading this to Finland Station at night, and I've been reading this to the Glassbury... Romance by John Cooper Powell's Reading the letters of James Murrow. And I have still been reading Mrs. McIntosh, My Darling by Margaret Young. And I've read close to 950 pages. <laughs> so still reading these things. This is what I've been reading in the afternoons, late afternoons, early evenings, and at night. And uh, I have countless used books downstairs. I've gone to thrift stores. I don't know. I must, I have to get around to showing those thrift store books. I just have to do it. <laughs> They're piling up. Uh, yeah, the other day I had to go to Zealand to a feed store and pick up sunflower seeds and crack corn for our birds and I stopped at Action House down the street. I stopped at Gateway Rescue Mission thrift store and found some books. I found books at Goodwill and I went to Blue Stockings and found some books and I got books just coming out of my ears. But I wanted to uh, just show you that what I've been reading, writing in my diary. I have to get my January, not my January, my July 2024 diary ready. I think I'll be using the color green for July. I have to get that ready. Because Sunday, this coming Sunday, is the last day of, of June 2024. And then we go into July, and then, you know, July is like, 
And then you, before you know it, school starts as, starts again. In August, on the 14th is my birthday. I'll be 72. On the 3rd of August will be our son Josiah's birthday and he'll be 42. <laughs> Yeah, I have to get these, Get I, I took it out so I can do that after I do this video. Get my July 2024 diary ready. So not much else going on. I don't have books coming in the mail until September. I have all these pre-order books coming in in September. And of course I might find books at thrift stores in July and August. Uh, I can't think anything right now I have coming in. There are books that I want, but they're they're not been published yet, and so I'm always ch I want the the Dionysus and the Carthusians final two volumes five and six on the Psalms. I want Van Manstrit his systematics. There's a Puritan reprint coming out by John Arrow Smith coming out. And those are things I'm really looking forward to. But there's really not much else. I mean, I the list, this year, 2024, I've gotten a lot of novels I bought that I have not read. <laughs> and I want to get into those instead of buying more. Like, I, I was really uh, enjoying... I was really enjoying reading the Glasbury romance last year, and I just put it aside. And it's over 1,112 pages. It's a, but it's a really I really enjoyed reading it. So I was really enjoying it, and uh, so I want. That's why I got back into it. I have this uncanny ability to read something and put it aside for maybe a year or six months. And I can pick it right back up and start reading it and not... Now, as you read it, as you pick it up after setting aside for a while, you kind of your memory starts, oh yeah, that's the storyline, that's the characters, that's what's going on. And so it's kind of easy. So that's what's going on here in my reading world and writing in my diary. Not much else going on. I live a very quiet, simple life here in the Hermit Hut. And, um, yeah, like I said, it's going to be busy around here this week until next week. And so it might be a while before I make another video. Unless um, this, I go down the lower level, down in the open basement where my library is and just sit there with my camera and show you those thrift store books. I might do that. I'm not really sure. So I hope you're having a good week. This is a Tuesday. Thank you for the comments. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you for the questions. And uh, yeah, I do plan to do some more shelf tours. The problem is, is I have some people who want to look at all my Christian books, but I have a lot of secular books, and so I'm not really sure how to do it. If I thought about doing a shelf of Christian books and then a shelf of secular books, and kind of breaking it up instead of just showing you, because I could I could make videos showing Christian books. Oh. I could probably do, I don't know, probably at least 20, 30 videos just on showing Christian books. And because I have a huge Christian library, because I was going to go into the gospel ministry and be a, a teaching elder in a conservative Presbyterian Calvinistic church, but it didn't turn out. And also, but even though it didn't turn out, I'm still a student of God's Word. I still buy a lot of Christian books, good Christian books, uh, which I have almost everything I want. So I look for special special books, you know, Puritan reprints or 
medieval theology or medieval commentaries or you know unusual things like uh, Presbyterian 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 pre, oh that Presbyterian predestination and early modern theology things like Reformation commentaries they come out about once a year these are kind of things I collect so it's going on 20 minutes I've done my ramble I got my pins all here ready I got pins I got paper uh, I love paper I got tons of paper so I got paper and pens I got the time I got books I'm not being bombed I'm not being fired at by snipers I'm not facing nuclear annihilation so I can sit in this quiet little hermit hut read and write pray and cry out come Lord Jesus quickly so I hope you're all doing well and I'll close. And until next time, bye.